Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles, where today we're featuring a tank that I've certainly never featured before. The relatively new Kunza Panzer, or at least I think that's how you pronounce it. I've probably got it wrong. This is a tier 9 German <laughs> medium tank, more on that in a moment. And today it's being driven for us here on the Ensk map by... by Lud... It's Dave, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Dave's back! Yay! Dave, we missed you. Where have you been? How have you been? In your brand new German Tier 9 medium. Yeah, about that. I mean, this is not a medium tank. This is a light tank with a 105mm gun. It's got the speed and mobility of a light tank. It's the size of a light tank. In fact, it's smaller than some light tanks. It's definitely got the armour of a light tank. 40mm hull armour. The turret is slightly better. The lower half of the turret is 63 whole millimetres thick, which isn't going to stop anything. It's quite well sloped in the upper half of the turret, however, but it's only 40 millimetres thick, so... Well... It's funny, actually, because 40 millimetres of armour can be overmatched by 121 millimetre of shell calibre. And um, what do all of those Russian heavies have? <laughs> So a hold down position like that, you get shot at, if you get hit, it's going to go right through. The only medium tank thing about this is the gun. It's a short barreled version of the ubiquitous and world famous British L7 105mm anti-tank gun. Presumably in this case, a version of the various different Rheinmetall versions of this gun that were produced for the German army. You can see that this tank has siege mode, as Dave is activating it popping in and out of cover here. And that's interesting, because this is not the only alleged medium tier 9 tank equipped with the L7 105mm gun. Possibly the most famous, of course, being the British Mark 7 Centurion, which is also a tier 9 medium tank. And the reason I say it's interesting is because this premium tank is better in every way that matters other than armour and hit points, than the Mark 7 Centurion. This tank has a better top speed, it has a better reverse speed, it has a better power to weight ratio, it turns faster, it's actually got better gun elevation and depression, which is one of the main selling points of the uh, Centurion. It's got better damage per minute. It doesn't have great damage per minute, but it's still better than the Centurion. It's got a faster reload. It's just a better tank. The Centurion does have better armour, I mean, it doesn't have good armour, although it does have a good turret. But the only other aspect in which the Centurion beats this thing out is in its aiming time and its accuracy. Except this tank has siege mode, <laughs> so it can get better aiming time and accuracy at the flick of a switch. In effect, what you have here with the Kunza Panzer, or however you pronounce it, is a tier 9 light tank because, well, look at it, that's what it is. It's got light tank size and mobility. But it's also got superior firepower to a tier 9 medium tank armed with the same gun. Same damage and penetration, which is pretty good, 390 alpha and 268mm of penetration, with uh, high velocity APCR as standard ammunition on this thing. But in every other respect, damage per minute, reload, rate of fire, gun handling and reticle bloom while moving and turning, gun elevation, gun depression, and at the flick of a switch, better accuracy and aiming time as well than a medium tank at the same tier with what is basically the same gun. And just in case you were thinking, ah oh, yes Jingles, but what about? Yep, it's better than the Leopard prototype in exactly the same ways as well. But under the current circumstances, that may be just as well. It's going to need to be a good tank, in order for Dave to salvage something from the utter disaster that has befallen his team in this particular Tier 10 battle here on the Ensk map. He's just pulled back two kills, knocking out an Object 277 and the Leopard 1, so his team are now only three kills behind. And yes, that is a Scorpion G firing 311mm penetration gold at a tank that only has 63mm of armor. Twice. I'm not criticising his ammo choice, it's his money after all, I'm just saying the Scorpion G's gun has 65mm of penetration with its high explosive shells, which would have given him nearly an extra 200 damage per shot, but hey, it's his money. Oh, Dave's been joined by a Mark 7 Centurion. Look at the size difference. 
Would you believe these are both medium tanks on with the same gun? <laughs> Well, of course they are. How does this tank get 15 degrees of gun depression, by the way? I mean, don't forget, just look at the turret while you're considering this, But and don't forget that for, in order for the barrel to depress 15 degrees, the breech inside the turret has to elevate 15 degrees. So unless they can pop the top of that turret open in order to flip out the gun breech whenever they're depressing the gun barrel, I just don't see how that's physically possible. Oh. Less. Maybe this is an East German tank, which means they'd be able to license some of that special Russian bullshit that allows the T100LT in a turret that's only two feet tall to somehow manage to get five degrees of gun depression. Oh, could have done without that. Still, probably worth it in order to take the E50 out. You will be completely unsurprised to learn that this thing also has better gun handling and DPM than the E50 too. I think it's worth pointing out, however, that since that encounter with the Scorpion G, when they started to turn things around, and they have now equalised the kills, that at no point have his team as a whole, even though they have less tanks remaining than the enemy team, they never had less hit points remaining than the enemy team. Which does mean that even though his team were dropping like flies, they were going down fighting. Oh, they've just lost the Centurion. Well, that was unfortunate. Two against three now. This is now the first time since they were four kills down, when the scores were five kills to nine, when the team have had less health than the enemy team. But I think pretty much everybody here now are one-shot kills. The Leopard 1 certainly is. In fact, between Dave and the Leopard 1, they barely have 400 health to share. So Dave is using that mobility to try to get around and support that Leopard 1 without putting himself at undue risk because the enemy team don't want to get hit by these 105mm guns either. Okay, the defender wasn't quite a one-shot kill, but he definitely is now. Oh no, Leopard, watch out! SU-101's behind you. No, we're fine. The Leopard's seen him. Defender might be trying to sneak around the other side. Uh, then again, maybe not. I just heard a shot. Did the Leopard fire and miss? Oh dear. Yes, he did. Well, the Leopard was pretty much doomed there regardless of what happened, but Dave was at least able to take out the T110E4. Looks like the SU-101 was thinking about flanking around and trying to beat his reload. Dave thought about sitting there in ambush waiting for him and then thought, hang on a second, what about that defender? Oh, holy... <laughs> Hit his tracks, burns the repair kit, he's not going to sit there waiting for the SU-101 to come around roving up his arse. He doesn't quite have the speed to beat the defender's reload, but is the SU-101 going to try popping around this side? Yes he is. Big mistake. <laughs> he's reacquired the defender, who will definitely have reloaded by now. Proximity spotting him, he's within 50 meters. That is not a good thing. He's going to need to break contact here. He wants to surprise the defender. He doesn't want to have to come around a corner with the defender waiting for him. So, well, this is a very, very mobile <coughs> medium tank. So breaking contact is not that difficult. The defender, of course, is not what you'd call a slow heavy tank but there's no way it's going to catch a Kunza Panzer on the run. So this is obviously very, very good for Dave. It means he can dictate the terms of the engagement, or at the very least, leave the defender guessing as to which side he's going to attack from. Getting spotted now, of course, would be disastrous. Although if he did, I mean, the defender's gun handling is absolutely terrible. He would have to be extremely lucky to be able to snap a shot at range and catch Dave out. But, well, you don't want to be relying on luck. You don't want to be relying on it because while there's usually a lot of it around, it's often the bad variety. So, keep that defender guessing. Take a nice wide berth. I mean, the defender at this point knows that Dave could be absolutely anywhere. 
You might be thinking, what on earth is Dave doing driving across open ground here? But, well, there's a method to his madness, because not only is his mobility vastly superior to the defenders, but his camo rating and view range is as well. It would probably be more dangerous to be trying to track the defender down by driving around in the city streets, where you could come around a corner just to find a defender pointing its gun straight at you. Under those circumstances, he may still come off better because he does have superior gun handling and would probably win the snapshot. But again, that's not something you really want to be relying on. So instead, he's using that mobility, in combination with the superior camo and view range, to thoroughly confuse that defender as to where he's going to be attacking from. Very careful, of course, not to drive through the cap circle and alert the defender to his position. And sure enough, there he is, facing the wrong way, and dead. Now, I'm not going to say that was a comfortable win for young Dave, because nobody would believe me. He was clearly sweating bullets throughout the second half of that battle, but nine kills and a Nichols medal. And to get that, you have to kill at least four enemy tanks or tank destroyers in one battle. And they all have to be at least one tier higher than you, so that is not a common medal. Neither is the Radley Walters, obviously. And he wasn't just kill stealing, I mean, he did do four and a half thousand damage. And his teammates weren't exactly idle. I mean, yes, they were getting their asses handed to them. But they were going down fighting. There was a fair amount of damage spread around the whole team there. So it was a close, well-fought battle for both teams, really, and could have gone either way, right up until the end. Something that's not particularly common in World of Tanks of late, where usually the results are just a roller coaster for one team as they cruise right over the top of the other team and barely pause for breath but not today. So, even though there is more than a hint of bullshit about the tank in which you obtained this result, it was still an extremely hard-fought battle on the kind of map that doesn't really favour a tank like this, so exceptionally well done to you. Everyone else, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.